Welcome to Italy for round 11 of the European Rally Championship. Yes, this is the Rally San Remo, a tarmac rally par excellence, twisting and turning in the mountains near the Italian Riviera. Gian Domenico Basso has won this rally twice. Les San Remo con Gian Domenico Basso. Gian Domenico, parlez-moi. So here we are with Gian Domenico. Uh, tell us a bit about your home event. Well, it is a beautiful rally, very difficult and technical. Um, I'm at home in San Remo, and I know the stage is pretty well, especially uh, the first leg. It's a long rally because you need to maintain the concentration as well. And there's no time to breathe or indeed to relax. It's not very fast, not a lot of straights, uh, but there's plenty of corners, and you just don't stop turning that wheel. San Remo 2013 starts with a loop of three stages, 53 competitive kilometers in total. It's sunny with a temperature of around 15 Celsius. Well, after a disappointing performance in Poland, Craig Green has high expectations in San Remo. He's well prepared and aims for a win, but during the loop, Green loses grip, and uh, with that, he loses confidence. The Irish Ace fourth after three stages, 11.7 seconds behind the lead. Twice a European champion, Joan Domenico Basso, not really happy with the setup of his Peugeot. Basso third after three stages, 6.8 seconds behind the leader. Corsica winner Brian Bouffier had a strong start, fastest on the first stage, but drops back on stage three. Well, clipping that guardrail on stage three at the six kilometer mark from the finish line. Not good. Right rear wheel on Bouffier's Peugeot damaged, loses one minute and drops from the lead to eighth. Umberto Scandola already secured the Italian championship title uh, before arriving in San Remo. And the Skoda Italian driver fastest on that second stage. Multiple Italian champion Paolo Andreucci goes fastest on the third stage and takes the lead after the first loop but only 0.4 seconds ahead of Scandola. It's an all-Italian podium so far, with Andriucci leading ahead of Scandola and Basso. Mm. 
Aspetta, quindi si due vai piccola, due vai piccola, così tre più più e subito si due vai, due vai, molla, venti, dopo re, sinistra, tre, sinistra, con destra tre più più, sinistra no, tre più tenere e per flop tre meno meno lunga, apre per si destra due vai pancia, lunga e tira. Officials go to driver Esopeka Lappi. While competing for the first time in San Remo, Lappi is here to learn about tarmac driving. He's seventh after three stages. Oikee, eri paha sumpu, 51, huomio, oikee, loiva, kolme, vasen, tiukka. Seitsemän, tuo tulee ihan tauluun, jaa, vasen, hidas, viis, oikee, nopee, ja pitkä vasen, tiukka. So after three stages, this is how it shapes up, looking very Italian for the top three. Craig Breen still just 11.7 seconds down, Perico in the frame at 21.8. Bouffier's mistake cost him almost a minute down. San Remo has one of the most iconic stages in rallying, La Ronde. For this edition, Ronde was planned to be 55 kilometers in length, run in the dark. But the day before the start of the rally, the organizers decided to cut it into two parts for safety reasons. Well, it's a bit of a pity, says Bouffier. Uh, the organizers uh, made a long stage, 55 kilometers. It would have been great to show that rally drivers are real sportsmen, but uh, there's been some lobbying to cut it in two from uh, one of their partners, and um, I can't really say more, he says. Uh, it's a little bit disappointing because, uh, you know, you, you have yourself in the, in, the, in the frame of mind to, you know, for the last two or three weeks, all I've been thinking about is, you know, the Ronde stage and how vital it will be for for, uh, for for the outcome of the rally. So, of course, it's disappointing, but I'm sure there's a good reason for it, and uh, we just have to try and do the best we can to, you know, to, to move on. Personally, I prefer a longer Ronde stage. Um, don't understand why they cut the stage in two parts. Uh, I prefer the longer version. Official Pirelli driver Paolo Andreucci is in favor of the decision made by the organizers for safety reasons. I don't think he says uh, we need to uh, such a long stage. Last year we had many accidents. Uh, happened in that stage in Italy with the experience we've had in the past racing at night. It's, uh, it's not an easy thing. Wonderful colors of autumn in the Italian Liguria region. Absolutely beautiful part of the world. So after the opening loop run during the afternoon, teams and drivers get ready for the Ronde stages. Now plural. Starting 9.21 in the evening, the tension, palpable, it's on the rise. After being in the lead after the first loop, Andriucci opens the road in the first part of the Ronde. 
Almost 34 kilometers long, hundreds of corners taken in the dark. A huge challenge for everybody, including their machinery. Things not going scandalous way in the dark. The Skoda driver loses precious time on Andreucci. There's some frustration in the air. Basso has chosen a medium compound tyre. He's not happy with the feeling of the car just yet. for Brian the last couple of weeks so this moment of truth for the Peugeot driver Brian hits trouble driving on with a broken right wheel Bouffier was holding eighth place at the start of the first Ron section. Bouffier catching and passing Breen. Bouffier signs the fastest time, gains two places overall, jumping to sixth. Just before the corner, the car just completely snapped, uh, and I hit the drain in the back. Not very hard, but the, the wheel actually broke, so we stopped and changed the wheel. But I'm, I'm waiting to see whether the wheel, it's broken the wheel again or something. I don't know how much farther we go. Oh, no. oh, it's finished. It's finished, says Lara Vanest. Well, despite their efforts, Craig Breen and co-driver Lara have to retire. They'll be back on day two, yeah. albeit not in contention. Well, drivers have only a couple of minutes to prepare their car for the next stage, the second part of Ronde. An impressive drive by Andreucci on the second part of round. Destra 
Oh, well, well, except for the fact that we hit a fox and uh, broke a light in the front, drove a high speed, I tried to avoid it, but couldn't, he says. Well, things get worse for Scandala in the second part of the round. He loses 21 seconds on Andreucci. He's not happy at all. He had no words to describe his feelings. I don't know what's happened. No, he's not wanting to talk. Umberto, what's wrong? No, no. Okay, right, okay, well. Basso has fitted his Berger with new Michelin tyres in the front. Hold second place after the first leg, 16 seconds behind Andreucci. Another two positions, one by Bouffier, now fourth after leg one. This is how it stacks up. Italy still dominating, but Bouffier, the Frenchman, back very much in contention. Minute and two down, Andreucci leads Basso. 16.2 seconds is that margin. That's how they stand after leg one. Italy has some very motivated rally fans, it seems. San Remo's leg two consists of six stages. Two loops of three, run twice. Bad morning for 2013 Italian champion Umberto Scandola. Once again, unlucky in San Remo. The engine of Scandola Skoda running hot, and the team decides to retire after stage six. Andreucci has a lead of 25 seconds going into stage 7. Sadly for him, a fast left right combination and a small concrete block is his problem. Andreucci losing almost 10 minutes, dropping from the lead to 11th. Disaster. Well, after Andreucci's misfortune, Basso takes the lead in San Remo, 17.4 seconds ahead of Bouffier, who suddenly is back in the running for victory.
Further down the standings, Andres Aigne is cruising in the production car cup, avoiding any risk on his way to the European crown. San Remo is the first running for Yokohama's new tyre, built according to the new ERC regulations. Well, it's the same tyre for dry and wet conditions. Uh, the tyre can perform well in the wet thanks to its uh, thread pattern. The compounds originate from the slick tyres uh, that we've used in the past, so the compounds are the same, but now there's a, uh, a different tread threaded through them. And, uh, at the moment, we have four compounds. It's not easy to choose which compound to use, as we previously did, as the tyres move a little bit more due to the uh, tread pattern, and that causes the tyre temperature to rise faster. The conditions in San Remo ideal for us to do some testing. Well, with the new Yokohama tyres, Anya cruises to second place in the Production Car Cup, more than enough to clinch the 2013 European Production Car title. Good indeed. 2013 European champion Jack Jan Kopetsky uh, paying San Remo a visit, uh, talking to his Skoda teammate Lappi at the service park. Lappi is fourth, going into the final loop of three stages, only 12 seconds behind third place Alessandro Perico. Well, Kopetsky knows that Lappi must have a difficult task. Same for everybody, I guess, well, in San Remo. It's very difficult because we have so many corners in here and everyone is different. So, I have to say, uh, you, you must have precise notes, but for the first time it's uh, almost impossible to get them. Wouldn't it be great to do the European Championship now, next year with uh, Esa Pekka? Oh, of course, uh, but I still uh, we don't know what is going to be next year. We need to wait uh, what Skoda is, is going to announce. In the end, it's a great result for the 20. Two-year-old Esapeka Lapi on the final stage. Lapi clinches second place, beating Perico. Very, very good weekend. I mean, uh, we learned a lot and uh, I think we did a good job. We improved step by step, so uh, I'm very satisfied. 2005 San Remo winner, Perico. As a spin on stage six, loses second place on the very last stage. The last loop of three stages will be decisive for the outcome of the rally. So who will win the 2013 San Remo Rally? Gian Domenico Basso or Brian Bouffier? Basso is leading into the final loop with an advantage of 17.4 seconds over Bouffier. Bouffier gained almost 30 seconds on Basso during the first loop. If Bouffier is able to keep the same speed, he could beat Basso. On the downhill section of stage eight, Bouffier is pushing very hard, but Basso goes even faster. On stage eight, Basso has beaten Bouffier by 2.6 seconds. His lead now 20 seconds. 
This is Bass on stage nine, the penultimate stage. Bass's co-driver Dotter receiving Bouffier split times by SMS. Dotter saying to Basso in Italian, was six seconds faster than Bouffier. Well, after receiving that split, Basso starts to control things, but uh, at the end of stage nine, it appears that a wrong split time was given to Basso. The Italian has eased off a bit too much, losing 13 seconds to Bouffier. Bouffier now closing, seven seconds only going into the last stage and now with Bouffier on the final stage pushing all he can to beat Basso for victory. Wrong information, a very dangerous thing. Bouffier though hitting trouble, bad luck again, a puncture. They get to puncture, so I quickly felt it, I don't know where, so we stop, we change the wheel, so that's it. That was a quick tyre change. Yeah, yes, we were very competitive, but uh, I think it won't be enough anyway. In the first part of the final stage, Basso attacking hard to keep Bouffier at bay. And the news that Bouffier has punctured coming in. Well, Basso has been told about Bouffier's puncture and uh, can now cruise to his third victory in San Remo. I'm so happy, I still can't believe it. Uh, Bouffier was very, very strong. We struggled with setup and tyre choice. It was really hard. I was not happy at all uh, sometimes with my performance. We did our best. We did stay concentrated and focused until the end, that's what counts. That indeed is what counts. Gian Domenico Basso does it again. Lappi, runner-up ahead of Perico, Bouffier, a fine fourth, could have been much more. What a fantastic battle in San Remo. Next up, it's the final round of the European Rally Championship. The Rally Internationale de Valais in Switzerland in November. I'm Carlton Kirby. I'll be there. Hope you will be too.